South Africa's most powerful nanosatellite is orbiting Earth after being launched into space this morning. The nearly 18 million rand ZA Cube 2 was a joint endeavor between the Cape Peninsula University of Technology, Stellenbosch University, the CSIR, and a number of private companies. It was launched with the Russian Soyuz Kanopuz mission from Siberia, together with other small satellites from the United States, Japan, Spain, and Germany. Let's find out more. A successful launch. Zeta Cube 2 will monitor marine traffic along the South African coast and also detect forest and felt fires. Zeta Cube 2 has been in development for the last two years and costs about 17.5 million rand. Through this program, several postgraduate studies were completed, including 13 engineers working on a satellite development program. Sansa is planning several more missions in the next couple of years to grow South Africa's participation in the so-called space race. It is the South African National Space Agency's mandate to develop the space industry in the country. As part of this development, we will have several missions planned over the next couple of years that will ensure that South Africa develops their own capability in space science and technology. Nanosatellites weigh between 1 and 10 kilograms. In 2013, Zeta Cube 1 was launched. Zeta Cube 2 is three times the size of its predecessor. Tanya Krauser, SABC News, Cape Town. All right, to discuss, uh, we're joined by the Deputy Director General from the Department of Science and Technology, Mboneni Moffe. He uh, joins us via Skype. Uh, Mr. Moffe, thank you very much. Uh, so this is a, a small satellite, but it sounds very big for South Africa. Yes, it's a small satellite and I think it's, as you know, dynamites come in very small packages. So it really is going to be a very powerful instrument for us. Well, how powerful? Exactly what will it do? It sounds like it will basically uh, spy on the coastline for us. It's basically going to do that. It also has got, uh, as part of it, some very powerful cameras, high quality, uh, new technology that is going to help in fire detection. As well. So it's going to be coming in with very useful information also on the ships that are entering our shores and leaving our shores. So everyone will wonder, can this help with abalone poaching, uh, say? It sounds like we can really zoom in and, and see exactly what's happening there. Yes, so, so all the... the, the uh, it All right, we'll try and get him up again. Unfortunately, uh, technology not working with us. That was Mboneni Moafe, the Deputy DG at the Department of Science and Technology. I have many more questions. In fact, uh, we believe that that Skype link is up again. Uh, Mr. Moafe, you, you were talking about how this could help uh, maybe with poachers. Hello. Mr. Moefe, uh, if you can hear me, it's, yes. it's Francis again. We, I can we, hear you. we lost you, but let's pick up the uh, conversation. You were talking about how this could help with poaching. Yeah, so, so it really is going to help us in surveilling and monitoring our oceans, which then helps us to know which ships are there in our oceans, which are there illegally, and which are there legally. For those that are in illegally, we can be able to communicate with our law enforcement agencies because you communicate with them. And in case they don't respond or they switch off the switch of the transponders, then you know they are there illegally and therefore you're able to deal with them. So you know that we've got a big problem of uh, poaching any form of fish, not just abalone, but abalone is just one of many. And the other thing is to note, which is important, is that this is not going to be the only satellite. It's the first one of the constellation that we're going to be launching so that we've got a number of them assisting each other. Mm. Well, explain the, the, the way it works. It, it seems like we piggyback off a, a big uh, Russian vessel. We, we launch into space. How is it positioned in space? So, so, so what happens is the, 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 the Russians have got um, good launching capabilities. So the launch of our satellite was together with other satellites. It was ours, I think it was the German one, it was the American one. So, so it was not just one satellite. But when they are there orbiting in space, for us to have our own data so that we have some data sovereignty, we need to launch even more in addition to this one so that we can have frequent visiting times and get information 24-7. 
Yeah, so as a small country, we can't uh, afford a huge satellite of our own. So, so we use these nano satellites and piggyback. But what about the cost? 18 billion. Uh, that's a taxpayer cost. Is it justified? No, it's not 18 billion. Uh, let me just correct that. Uh, the, I don't think there's a satellite that will cost you 18 Sorry, billion. Sorry, uh, forgive me, 18 million. <laughs> that's that, that's 16.5 million. And 16.5 million is not just the price tag for the manufacturing of the satellite. A uh, part of the satellite program is the training as well. We want to develop our own capacities. And just also to correct you, we do have capacity to manufacture big satellites. Uh, so it, it's just that the smaller satellites are much easier and cheaper to do in terms of training and also the uh, turnaround time in terms of finalizing the manufacturing yeah. supplies. Yeah, I guess I meant this is more cost effective for, for South Africa, uh, so we can launch a few nano satellites. Is, is that the way it's going? It seems many countries are interested in using these smaller satellites. Yes, they, they are really gaining a lot of momentum globally because of their uh, quickness to the market, but also they are very good as training too. I mean, we have trained so many masters and doctoral students by this program alone. So if we want to develop capabilities, because the quality of the technology that goes into them is high quality. So they are quite useful uh, in, in terms of just building capacity. Mm. How long will ZA Cube 2 stay up in space? We hope for a long time. When we launched ZA Cube 1 in 2013, we were told it's probably going to be there for six months. It's still there. It's helping us collect data on space weather. So we're hoping that this is going to be there for much longer time and then uh, in two or three years' time, we also are going to be uh, letting lose another four or five more to join in so that we can complete the constellation. Yeah. ZA Cube 2, we're saying, is the most advanced. Uh, explain how the technology has developed and is developing. So, so we, it's, it's the most advanced in terms of the technology that we have also in, included here, the fire monitoring system. The cameras that are included there, they are really high quality. We think that globally they can really compete with the best. So these are going to bring us high resolution pictures that will help us in issues of managing uh, felt fires. And we know uh, coming from what has been happening in California that felt fires can be very devastating in terms of human lives and also property. Mm. Well, well, we have our own examples at Francis Bay the other day, our homes up in flames. Could that have been avoided using nano satellite technology? Uh, it's too... Really, it's avoiding, but also critically responding because of the information that you get. You are able to respond properly and on time to deal with challenges when they arise, if you have got your own information. But if you are getting this information from other foreign satellites, well, they can give you the information as and when they want, which is not necessarily when you want it. And that is really what we're trying to deal with when we have our own satellites. Get that crucial thing of having your own data when you want it, in the form you want it, and as it is required by you as a country. Yeah. One last question. So we're using uh, the, the Russian launch vessel, obviously paying Russia, that has been uh, accused of spying, using technology, somewhat controversial. Uh, are you worried at all about any political ramifications around teaming up with Russia? So what teaming Russia. I mean, it's, this is more like it's a commercial transaction. As I've told you, this uh, this launch was uh, having our satellite, the German satellite, and the American satellite. So it is surely a transaction where you're saying the Russians have the capability, let's pay them and use them. So we're not teaming up with anybody. The, the teams that we have partnered with in development is obviously the French because this has been developed at the French South African uh, partnership at the University of Technology. But the issue of the Russia, science is a very interesting thing, if I may mention, that even during the Cold War, the countries that are always fighting each other collaborate on science, technology, and innovation, which is why this satellite today was launched in Russia. It had an American, a German, and a South African satellite in it. That is true. Thank you very much uh, for the explanation. So we know that this powerful nano satellite is now uh, orbiting Earth. It was launched earlier and that's the ZA Cube 2. That was the Deputy Director General at the Department of Science and Technology, Moneni Moafe.